My name is uh, Hamza Boukili and I am a mathematics uh, professor in uh, Shanghai Jiaotong University, uh, Paris Elite Institute of Technology. I had uh, the opportunity in 2016 during my student life to come to Shanghai and to spend a few months of an uh, exchange semester here in Shanghai. And at that time, I could feel that life here is uh, very pleasant, actually. So I had that thought in my mind to say that I'll be looking for good opportunities to come back again because it's a nice place to be. So in 2020, the student became the teacher and in late 2024, an entrepreneur. The kinds of math he teaches his students is applied outside the classroom in the development of algorithms to help companies save energy. Our aim is to apply some optimization algorithms and uh, machine learning techniques into the uh, energy efficiency in buildings to contribute to China's public policy in terms of carbon emissions. Shanghai is one very special business environment in the world actually. It's a strong and diversified economy. It means that actually as a business we are in an environment which is flourishing of diversity of clients in terms of number and also in terms of different types of clients. On a different side, there is the fact that China today is a very highly connected country. In comparison to other places in the world, here we enjoy a high degree of connectivity because mainly everything that you can think of in terms of recruitment, you will find people here in China that manufacture this, that do it for a long time and that are highly competitive in terms of price and quality of the equipments they do. Actually, I am in the best environment I can think of. Oh, it was a great to meet you. Hi, Thank hi. you so much for uh, spending the time with us. Nice to meet cool. you. Nice to meet you. Please. So, Hamza, tell me, you, you've established your company really, really recently, yeah. just uh, at the end of 2024. Yeah. Um, what prompted you uh, to, to take this step? So, actually, there is uh, many reasons uh, that uh, converged at the same time towards the fact that uh, uh, towards the decision to open the company. Uh, first of all, there is the fact that uh, AI, uh, artificial intelligence in the recent times is uh, a field of science which is gaining uh, more and more uh, dynamic. And uh, we wanted to have uh, our little contribution in this field. So this is on one side. On another side, there is the uh, China's national policies in terms of uh, carbon neutrality, which encourages people to work on their energy to consume the energy more efficiently to have a smaller carbon footprint uh, so in order to align the different sorts of uh, policies uh, at the same time the national policies and the international artificial intelligence uh, uh, tendency uh, we thought about this project actually in the recent times and uh, it was uh, like uh, highlighted by uh, the creation and the setup of the company and uh, at the end of 2024. Now, being such a new company, this is obviously the most difficult stage for any startup. How do you go about, you know, failure-proofing yourself, I suppose? Of course, uh, failure is a risk that exists uh, all the time, especially for uh, such a project. So it's something that uh, we accept. Uh, it's a, um, a probability that exists and we uh, could maybe uh, face one day. But at the same time, in my opinion, it's a question of uh, proportions. So if the proportion of failure is big, you would ask yourself, is it worth it to invest the time, the energy and eventually the money? In my point of view, the proportion of success is bigger for the moment. So uh, we have every reason uh, to do this project right now and not to postpone it to tomorrow. And uh, even uh, if you think about uh, abandoning, no, it's completely not an option because we have every reason to think that it's going to gain momentum. I want to talk about some of those succeeding factors because, you know, uh, there does seem to be at least vocally quite a lot of support coming from, from the government towards yeah. yeah. uh, high-tech 
entrepreneurship. How how do you how, how have you sort of benefited from some of this? Have you? Uh, so actually, uh, here we can talk about the place we are in today. We are in uh, Tsaohejin High Tech uh, area, which is one uh, high tech key area of Shanghai City, uh, which also has uh, you know quite a long uh, history of hosting and uh, building from scratch uh, startup projects. So this is a very uh, convenient environment for such a project to set up and to grow big because these guys have seen this uh, all the time they have experience they can accompany you to be to be better and at the same time uh, since uh, artificial intelligence is a field which is gaining a lot of momentum recently this actually translates into practice by some uh, very concrete uh, measures for example being labeled an AI, AI company you have the priority to come and to set up actually in front of uh, maybe other projects or other fields that have to go through deeper analysis before uh, seeing whether or not to accept them to open in this place. Here actually we have a supercomputer and it's free for, for, for our companies to That's access huge. to. That's a very huge thing. I think there is a lot of you know talk about these high-tech parks, industrial parks and things but what you've given is a really great explanation about you know how and why they're important. You yourself come from a university background. Yeah. Um, how much cooperation uh, do you see between learning institutions uh, and institutions like uh, Sao Hajin because we've sort of seen it from other angles before in terms of graduates and recruits, but also, you know, you are an academic coming yeah. into, <laughs> into business. How do you see the cooperation on that side? I'm teaching my students mathematics, basic algorithms and, uh, and uh, uh, logic elements and so on. And uh, through a project like mine, I could help them to see in practice how some very innocent elements of mathematical logic could be used to build up an algorithm, to build up a tool, could like have a, a practical value in the market that could actually be sold for a lot of money actually. So you are just you are just selling your 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 uh, um, your field of expertise a little bit actually so, uh, and being able to build such a, a bridge between the two circles uh, it's something that i think uh, as a life purpose is something that uh, gives a huge satisfaction actually so my long term purpose is to be able through my project to uh, build this kind of uh, partnership between the academic world and the industrial world this way I can allow our students for, from the university to put their knowledge into practice to be able to confront themselves to the real-life market issues at the same time we hope to be able to, through our knowledge, through our algorithms, through our science, to be able to put in the market some uh, new tools that are, uh, we hope, efficient, interesting, and maybe could help a lot of people out there to uh, save a lot of money, maybe. Fantastic. Really <laughs> fascinating insights. Thanks Thank so much for talking to us. Thank you very much.